Let's build a bare metal RISC-V Hello World in Assembler. All dependencies and source code for this project are in my repo. Let's start by creating a file called hello.s. I define a constant called uartbase with the address 1000 uh, and then four zeros. This is the base address for the uart that we'll use to send data. In the text section, I load the address of the string hello world to register zero. And then in the data section, we'll need to define that hello world string. Next, I load the UART base address into register A1. And this address will be used to send characters to the UART. Now I call the putS function, which will handle the actual printing of the string to the UART. So now I define an endless loop that will effectively end the program, and this prevents unwanted instructions from being executed, because if you imagine execution continues here, it would run into the data section, and then it would potentially run into garbage within memory. So this loop effectively keeps the program frozen once all the activity that you need to have done is done. Now to find the putS function, this function accepts a pointer to a string in A0 and the UART base address in A1. The function starts with a loop labeled 1, which will execute while string bytes are not null. Inside the loop, we'll load the byte at the current position of the string into register T0. And next, we check to see if the byte's null. And if it is, we jump forward to the uh, label 2. Since the byte is not null, we'll store it at the UART base address, which sends it out to the serial port. And note that I am ignoring flow control, which in theory could mean these characters get dropped. But um, as we'll see, it's not that's not really the case. And now we increment the string pointer A0, uh, which basically moves us to the next character in the string. And then we jump back um, to the label one to repeat this whole loop. Now we're gonna define label two. And once the end of the string is reached, uh, we'll drop down to this label and then we'll return from the function. Now to find a new file to hold uh, the linker script called baremetal.ld. The section's keyword indicates the beginning of the linker script sections where I'll specify the memory layout and the sections of the program. So we'll set the location counter to 8000000. This means that the following sections will be placed as if starting from this address in memory. Why is this important? Now that address is important because we need to know where in memory to load our application so that when the CPU boots and comes out of reset, we know what address that it is going to get loaded into the program counter to start executing instructions. And so if we um, start QEMU, which will be the emulator that will be running this program under, and uh, we start it in non-graphic mode, and then we redirect the console input output to our terminal here, and we start the vert machine, which will be the machine type that we'll do the simulation under. What you'll see here, if we scroll up, firmware base is at 8000000. So um, that seems to be the address of where the firmware, quote unquote, the firmware should be loaded 
um, that will be started when the CPU comes out of reset. And to confirm that, again, we can look here and this region here is defined as X, which means executable. And in fact, no other region, memory regions, are defined as executable. So that's a pretty good clue that this is where executable program code needs to live. I'll define the text section, which contains the program's executable code. The text section is populated with all the code present in the input files labeled with section directives of .text. Next, I need to align the location counter to the size of a common page, ensuring that the next section starts at a page boundary. Otherwise, the linker could try to uh, try optimizing these two sections into one, jamming them together. Um, it could cause the text section to be marked as writable as a result. And um, that's bad because compiled source code, presumably, should not be changeable in memory. So this is a little hack that takes care of that. And now for the data section, which contains initialized data like the hello world string, um, similar to the text section, is populated with all the data present in the input files. Now I'll create a make file that will control the building of the source into an executable. The default action will be to build the executable called hello. To build hello, it depends on two files, uh, hello.o, the compiled object file of the main program, and bare metal ld, which is the linker script. Now we'll run the linker. And we'll use a T flag to specify the linker script. Next, we define the architecture uh, as RV32I, which implements the 32-bit base instruction set. And that instruction set we relied upon in the assembler code that we've, that we've written. Um, and then the application binary interface is set to assume that all ints and longs and pointers are 32 bits. Since I'm not interacting with any standard library code, uh, I'm going to exclude linking standard library. And then I'm also going to build this executable statically so that there are no um, external dependencies, load libraries, etc. And then finally, we're going to output the executable and accept as input the object file. Now to build the hello.o object file, it depends on the assembler source hello.s. And we're going to run the assembler and specify the architecture and the ABI, again, as done above. And then we want to accept as input hello.s, and we want to output hello.o. And then I'm going to define a, um, an action called run, which depends upon the executable hello. Um, we'll use a QEMU as the simulator. So we're going to run QEMU. Well, actually, first, what I'm going to do is, is echo some instructions to the console because it's kind of difficult to close QEMU if you're not sure. And then we're going to run QEMU. And we're going to set it to not show the graphical console window of the simulated machine. And we're also going to redirect serial data to the console of the host, basically to my MacBook, so that you know, when we run this in a terminal, we can actually see the output of this program as if it was running on the Mac, but of course it'll be running in QEMU instead. Uh, so we want to simulate uh, a machine called vert, and sometimes in QEMU, um, authors have created vir uh, virtual simulations of boards that have hardware located at different addresses. The vert hardware is sort of a generic, it's not meant to be tied to any board, it's sort of a generic setup of hardware. And this is the setup of hardware that allowed us to determine and know that the serial port, for example, starts on uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So how do we know what address to write data to the UART at? Um, well, one way that we can know is we can run in a console QEMU, which will be the emulator that we'll be running to simulate a RISC-V system. And if we scroll down here, we have these 
domain regions, which sort of look like addresses, but it doesn't really tell us what these are. Um, what we're really looking for is the serial port. So how can we figure that out? Well, we can hit Control A C, gets us to a cons to a QMU monitor console, and we can type in info M tree, which speaks to the memory tree of the system. And you'll notice here the serial port is sitting on one zero 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 zero. So that's nice to know. That's where our serial port is. But how do we know? And, and you can see that there's a range from, from zero to seven bytes of memory mapped I.O. associated with this device. But how do we know that we're supposed to write to this particular address? So to know that, we have to know what kind of serial port we're dealing with. If we go over to the QEMU documentation and we look up the vert generic virtual platform for um, the RISC-V system emulator, what we can see is there is one NS16550 compatible UART. So we need to know what the specification is of that UART. To set of documentation speaks to the 16550 type of UART. And if we scroll down here, we can see that the registers, there are, there, remember there were seven of them in total. And of course this would be zero to six because it's zero based. The transmitter holding register is at address zero. So that's how that we know that the base address of the UART is the transmitter holding address for sending characters to to be written. Finally, we're going to, instead of QEMU loading the BIOS, uh, its own BIOS by default, we're going to load our Hello World as the BIOS um, because we're not depending upon any of the BIOS services to run this application. So let's open the terminal and let's run the program. And as you can already see, Hello World is printed um, thus our application built and ran in QEMU. So I'm going to hit um, Control A C. That gets us back to the QEMU um, monitor, and we can just type quit. Thanks for watching.